Hello everybody, my name is Susan Birch and today I'm going to share with you an introductory video about my audacious goal that I call Let's Get New Zealand Healthy Again. I am creating a series of videos that are free for everyone to watch and I would love it if you would please share them with friends, family, workmates and anyone else you may um, who may find them useful. I hope after watching these, you will understand a lot more about how the food we eat affects our health and be able to make better decisions. In the last 30 years, I have been studying nutrition and I've seen the health of New Zealanders deteriorate and I'm sure you have all seen the same thing happening. None of us are immune to this. We all have family and friends who have chronic diseases brought on by poor nutrition. And this is despite all the information we have about what we should be eating. The reason I'm making these videos is because I believe all that information has just led to a lot of confusion. Nutrition recommendations always seem to be changing and none of us know what to believe anymore. It wasn't until I really started to delve into how food works in our body that I got some clarity. This enabled me to sort out facts from fiction and to figure out what I should be eating and why. The purpose of these videos is to help you do the same thing. Understand, get some clarity, sort out fix from fiction, and then simplify the process. I believe we can all get healthy again. It seems so simple in theory. If we would just give our bodies the nutrients they need, we would be a normal weight and our bodies would function properly. The truth is, while it's simple, it's not that easy. There are many, many reasons why we struggle to do this and I will talk about those in future videos. It's important to remember that our bodies are a very complex machine that need the right ingredients to operate properly. When we starve our bodies of vital nutrients, it starts to break down and eventually stops working. In order to get healthy again, we're going to need both knowledge and strategies. In these videos, I'm going to explain how and why we respond to food the way we do. And I'll also explain the effects food have once it is inside our body. I will also talk about the effect food has on our emotions. I'm sure we're all familiar with that hangry feeling. I know I find it very difficult to control my emotions when I'm hungry, and we've all seen this with our kids and grandkids. But it's not only hunger that triggers our emotions. The food we eat plays a huge role in depression and many neurological and behavioral disorders. And in future videos, I'm going to talk to you about that. I'm also going to explain why it's so common to overeat when all we want to do is be skinny. There are a lot of theories out there from food addiction to stress and dysfunctional behavioral management systems. And there's also another very important reason that drives this overeating, and it's called the protein leverage theory. When our body is not getting enough nutrients, and I'm not talking about the energy that we get when we eat carbs or fats, I'm talking about the amino acids, the vitamins, the minerals, and all the trace elements that we need to run that complex machinery we call our body. When we don't get enough of those, we will keep eating until we do. 
we have trillions and trillions of chemical reactions in our body that take place in every cell, every second. And if we don't have enough raw materials for these, we will keep eating until we do. As well as knowledge, we need strategies. Knowledge doesn't help if we don't have some way of applying it. I'm a terrible procrastinator and all the knowledge in the world and all the best intentions don't stop me procrastinating. These things only work when the going is good. I need to have strategies I can apply when things aren't going so well. So we need strategies to help us change our relationship with food. We also need strategies for getting back on track when things go wrong, which they always do and always will do, and probably more often than we realise. I believe to make long-term changes, we need strong support networks within our families, communities, friends, schools and workplaces. This is the problem, probably the area that people find the most difficult. It's hard when the rest of the family don't see a need to change how they are eating or when there are disagreements about what is the best diet. It can be very difficult to manage social situations and friends' expectations. Motivational speaker Jim Rohn once said, we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. I'm sure we've all experienced how difficult it is to have ideas that are different from the groups we belong to. And our nutrition habits are the same. It's very difficult to eat differently from our family and friends. This is why support networks are so important. We all know that most diets will work for a short period of time. Many people keep losing the same five or six kgs over and over. The reason all these diets work for a while is because they all reduce processed food and alcohol. And I've never ever seen a diet that doesn't use this strategy. This causes, this causes a reduction in calories. The problem is that calorie restricted diets are not sustainable. They leave you feeling hungry and depending on willpower for success. And this is the reason 99.9% .9 of them fail. We all know from looking around us and from our health statistics that all the diets in the world are not really working. I want to tell you, you don't need to starve yourself and feel hungry and deprived to be at your natural weight and stay healthy. There is another much better way and this begins by understanding how and why food does what it does in your body. Let's take a quick look at some statistics. I know most people hate looking at these numbers, but I think it's important that we do. Without knowing the numbers, there's little reason to change. And we do need to change. In a 2017 report, 1.2 million adult New Zealanders are obese. And I want you to think about that number for a moment and not just gloss over it. 1.2 million adult New Zealanders are obese. We have another 1.4 million who are overweight. That's 66% of our population and we weren't like this 50 years ago. How about our children? Did you know that 32% of our children are overweight or obese? And I don't know about you, but I think we're overdue to do something about this. 
Did you know that the food we feed our dogs is more highly regulated than the food we can feed our kids? Here's some more statistics. How about diabetes? 250,000 adult type two diabetics in our country. 1.1 million pre-diabetics. 40 new diabetics are diagnosed every single day. And how about our kids again? The first case of childhood type 2 diabetes in New Zealand was in the 1990s. And now this is common in our children. It's increasing at 3 to 5% per year. So just think about what this means for your child or grandchild as they grow up. The impact this will have on their quality of life for the next 60 or 70 years. Type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle disease. It is 99% reversible. I know all the doctors like to tell you it's genetic, leaving you to believe that it's inevitable, but I'm telling you that it isn't. And this is something I will talk about in more detail in a future video. I'll explain what really causes type 2 diabetes and what you can do about it. And I'll also explain why you don't have to be overweight to get type 2 diabetes. There are plenty of normal weight people with this chronic disease. And then we have all the other health problems. Heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's disease and the other dementias. And there are it's a reason that these are called diseases of civilization. What we are eating isn't the only factor, but it is an important one. And it is modifiable, so there is something that we can do um, something about. This is not an easy goal but I do think it's worth a go. What have we got to lose? So I hope you will all join me in becoming a healthier New Zealand. Let's try and change this together. I believe we can all be healthier again. So I want to thank you very much for watching this introductory video and for sharing. And please look out for the future videos. The next one I'll be presenting is about the macronutrients. Thank you.